So the war in Afghanistan has officially come to an end, which in and of itself is ridiculous because we still have thousands of troops there. And they're going to be staying there for years to come. But nonetheless, the media across the board has laid down and they're not critical and they just report what the government wants them to report. And they say, well, we are formally ending the war in Afghanistan. On paper, we are ending the war in Afghanistan, even though we are keeping people there. Now, this is particularly annoying because of how stupid it is to believe it. Like, if you really believe we're leaving when there's over 10,000 troops of ours still there, you're an idiot. And some people reached out to me on Twitter and they said, well, we still have troops in Germany. That doesn't mean we're still fighting a war there. To which I respond, are we engaged in combat against the Taliban in Germany? No, we're not, right? Well, we are still in Afghanistan. We're still fighting the Taliban in Afghanistan. And you're to tell me that while we have over 10,000 people there and we're still fighting there, that the war is over. It's the most ridiculous idea you can imagine, but that's what they're trying to tell us on paper and the media is going along with it. But let me go ahead and give you a breakdown as of right now what the war cost and what happened with the war by the numbers. So you can see in a concrete way the results of our foreign policy. So let's go through this here. First of all, the number 13, what does that represent? Well, that represents how many years the war lasted, making this the longest war in American history. The longest war in American history. Now, I do believe there's some sort of a, you know, you could argue Vietnam was longer, but I think what they mean by this, again, is formally speaking, the war in Afghanistan was longer. See, in Vietnam, they probably played the same trick. They probably pretended like the war lasted, you know, a shorter amount of time formally, but then they kept troops there afterwards. So in reality, if you really want to be as objective as you can be about it, it's true, I think, that the war in Vietnam is longer because our troops were really there for about 20 years. So Afghanistan's a little bit shorter as of right now, but just wait... <laughs> Just wait. Secular talk will still be here in 20 years, uh, you know, in 22 years or so. Uh, and we'll come back and we'll tell you, oh, hey, look at that. We still have troops in Afghanistan and they're still trying to fight the Taliban. So again, hold on, because there's a good chance Afghanistan will, in every way, shape and form, surpass Vietnam. The next number, 140,000. That is the highest number of U.S. troops that were present in Afghanistan in the year 2010. 13,500. That number represents the number of international troops, mostly U.S. troops, that are going to stay in Afghanistan right now, even though the war is over. The number 38,000. That represents the number of U.S. forces that were in Afghanistan at the beginning of 2014. I love that. The Democratic president who was supposed to wind down the war while nobody was looking, he was like, yeah, send some more troops in there. Fuck that. Ex nay on the leave scay. Send in more troops. So 38,000 U.S. forces were in Afghanistan at the beginning of 2014. The number 2,224, that represents the number of U.S. troops who were killed in Afghanistan during the war, with more than 1,000 international coalition troops that were killed. The estimated number of troops that were wounded, 17,674. The estimated number of Afghan civilians killed, 21,000. The estimated number of weapons the U.S. provided to the Afghan National Security Forces, many of which, the experts say, have gone missing. That number is 747,000. We flooded Afghanistan with 747,000 weapons. And then we're going to be surprised when it turns out that a lot of those weapons fell into the hands of the Taliban and Al-Qaeda and ISIS and all these other jihadist extremist groups. How about the amount in dollars that the U.S. spent trying unsuccessfully to provide Afghan farmers with soybeans as a new cash crop? This is a huge story we spoke about on Secular Talk not too long ago where the uh, the American government was like, well, 
we're going to crack down on opium coming out of Afghanistan, allegedly. So now let's give them another crop where they can make some money. Let's give them soybeans. Well, we tried to give them soybeans and nothing happened. They didn't grow. There is no soybean market in Afghanistan. But how much money did we waste trying to set this up? $34 million. How about uh, the amount of money appropriated to overseas contingency operations in Iraq and Afghanistan for just the coming year? Okay, so again, continued military operations. How much does that cost for just the coming year? $63.7 billion. How about the cost per hour for the war? $10 million. Remember, uh, we're talking here specifically just about Afghanistan. That's it, just Afghanistan. When you add in Iraq and you add in Syria and you add in the drone strikes, that number shoots up much more. But just for Afghanistan, $10 million per hour. I'm so happy that we're spending our money in such an intelligent way, aren't you? And then finally, what is the cost of the war in Afghanistan just up until today? So everything we spent from when we went there until today. $773 billion. That does not include future costs. That's just till today. Whew. You want to talk about wasting money. Now, when all of this happened, right, and all you... You've been given all this information. You know all these numbers. Is Afghanistan any better off today than it was when we went in? It's not, right? In fact, it's, it's commonly understood in Washington, in Democratic and Republican circles, in establishment circles. Everybody knows that whenever we really do fully leave Afghanistan, you know what's going to happen? The same thing that happened in Iraq. You're going to have some kind of jihadist force, whether it's the Taliban or Al-Qaeda or ISIS or any other one. You're going to have them be resurgent. You're going to have them take over areas that they had beforehand. It's going to be like we were never there in the first place. And it's impossible to ever get to a situation where we leave and that doesn't happen. It doesn't matter if we leave today or if we leave in 30 years from now. Whenever we're going to leave, the, uh, whenever we leave, the radicals in the area are going to take over. That's how it's going to work. And by the way, the war on terror overall, including the war in Afghanistan, what has it done? It has created more radicals because we've killed so many civilians that people who are family members of those dead civilians turn around and they say, normally I was neutral towards America. I didn't care either way. I was a moderate. Now I want to pick up an AK-47 and join an extremist group because fuck them. That's why. They killed my aunt. They killed my uncle. They killed my best friend. They killed all these different people I know. So we have created more terrorists. The war on terrorism has been an abject failure. If the idea was to limit the number of terrorists, we didn't. We did the exact opposite. It's just like the war on drugs. We wage a war on drugs to stop people from taking drugs. Guess what? A trillion dollars later and decades later, more people are likely to take drugs now. So we just flushed a trillion dollars down the toilet. In this case, with the entire war on terror, when all is said and done, we're going to spend about $7 trillion, $7 trillion wasted, and we didn't achieve any of our goals. In fact, the opposite happened. We created more terrorists. Well done, America.